Welcome to Chemistry with Canadians! <laughs> Welcome to Chemistry with Canadians. Today we're focusing on coulombic titrations using non-isolated electrodes. Our first experiment will involve finding the amount of ascorbic present in orange juice, and then secondly we're going to extend that knowledge that we gained from that to determine the amount of sodium thiosulfate in swimmer shampoo. But first off though, what is coulombic titration? It's a procedure that where a known amount of current is applied to a solution with an unknown species in it. And that current is going to oxidize or reduce that unknown species until all of it is um, in a different state, a new state. And we're going to use the magnitude of that current and the duration that it was applied to find out the number of moles or the concentration or whatever we want to find out about that unknown species. In our system, we're using two different electrodes. We're using a carbon electrode and then a platinum electrode. And these two electrodes are chosen because they're both inert. So that means that they're going to provide the current, but they're not going to get oxidized or reduced or participate in the whole reaction. So we don't have to worry about them interfering with our results. The carbon rod here, it's going to be the oxidizing agent. So it can be called the anode or the working electrode. And then the platinum rod, it's going to be the reducing agent. So it's, it can be called the cathode or the counter electrode. Our solution is going to be comprised of 0.1 molar potassium iodide, some ascorbic acid or vitamin C, ascorbic acid is just the formula name, and this is going to be provided in the form of our orange juice. And then we have some phosphoric acid and some liquid starch. The reaction is going to begin at our anode. And what's going to happen here is iodide is going to be have two electrons stripped off it to produce iodine. And it's going to form this first chemical equation. So here we have, we have iodide. And that's from the potassium iodide. And it's going to lose two electrons. And then this, this will produce iodine. So that just, the iodide just got oxidized at the carbon rod. This reaction has a potential of 0.535 volts. So that's why we need, we need the current going in so it gives a little kickstart so it'll do that. So immediately after this iodine is produced, the iodine is going to react with ascorbic acid in this whole equation. So we have iodine this iodine, plus ascorbic acid, and it's going to create this dehydroascorbic acid plus some protons plus some iodide. So we're going to have iodine plus ascorbic acid. This happens spontaneously, doesn't need any current, it just, it just goes. However, since both electrodes are in the same cell, a problem that could arise is that this iodine could just be reduced right back to the iodide. So basically, iodine from here could be like, hey, I'll take those two electrons and back to iodide we go. So we just get back to the same thing. And this is a problem because then not all the iodines interact with the ascorbic acid, so it's just going to go right back. And then we can't use this whole method to calculate the amount of vitamin C because not all the iodine is reacting with it, so it's not going to be accurate. So, no, this is bad. So, in order to deal with that, make sure it doesn't happen, that's why we put in the phosphoric acid. So, what's going to happen with this is at our cathode, this reaction is going to happen, the third one. We're going to have two protons from that phosphoric acid. They're going to, they're going to take those electrons up from over here, and we're going to make some hydrogen gas. And this eliminates the problem of having our iodine being reduced instead. Protons being reduced, not a problem. 
So this completes the circuit. This is it. Basically, just to recap, iodine is being oxidized to iodine. Then to complete the circuit, protons from the phosphoric acid being reduced to hydrogen gas, and then this iodine is going to react with the ascorbic acid. The last reaction that goes on in this experiment is what's going to change the color so we can have a definite end point. And there's no more ascorbic acid for the iodine to react with, so no more of that. All gone. That's when the liquid starch is going to come into play. So it's gonna, the iodine is going to react with the liquid starch. There's not much starch. And this is going to form this I3 starch complex. But what's really cool about this thing is it's this blue, blackish, dark color. So it's really obvious that it's different from the orange juice color. So you can tell as soon as this black thing is produced that there's no more ascorbic acid, and that's the end point. We can use everything before that to know how much ascorbic acid was in that. All right, so now that you know what was actually going on in there, like with the chemistry of the reaction, we can use that knowledge and the data that we're going to get from that experiment to figure out the amount of ascorbic acid, so our end goal. So, all right, we can determine the charge. That's our first step. The, ch the charge is going to be equal to the integral of the current with respect to time over the time interval which the ascorbic acid reacted. With. reacted. So, to make this a little more clear, because that's a whole bunch of jumbling, this is approximately going to be the graph that you're going to get. So we have, time, we have time here, current, and then light. So you can see that this is where the ascorbic acid is all reacted because the light drops drastically. So right there, that's going to be our end point. So to determine the charge, since it's the integral of the current, it's going to be do to do to do. Oh, that's where it drops. So all this. This is charge. Luckily, Michael applicates that really easily. So now we know the charge. We also know, have to know three other important numbers, but since we're smart, we got this. Charge of an electron is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. That's number one. Number of electrons in a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And then the molar mass of potassium iodide is a 176 grams per mole. So we got those, we got four pieces of information now. And then also our fifth, fifth number. Using these two, our first equations, we have the oxidization of iodide, and then our titration of, of iodine and ascorbic acid. So we can tell that for every two electrons transferred, one iodine is produced, so two electrons, one iodine. And then for every one iodine produced, one ascorbic acid is consumed. So ultimately, for every two electrons produced, one ascorbic acid is consumed. So using those five pieces of information, we can determine the mass of the ascorbic acid in the orange juice. The equation will look like, as you can see on your screen here. So basically, all it is, is it's going to be the charge that we computed, thanks to good old microlab. And then that is multiplied by the charge of an electron, multiplied by the number of electrons in a mole, which is then multiplied by our stoichiometry between the two electrons and the one ascorbic acid, so that ratio. And then that's multiplied by our molar mass. And that's how we get it. So now that we have all that information, we can use that sort of same procedure and extend it to different applications. So in Skimmer Shampoo, there's this chemical called sodium thiosulfate. And in this reaction with potassium iodide, the thiosulfate is very similar and acts very similar to the ascorbic acid. So just as before, iodide is oxidized, is oxidized and protons from the phosphoric acid are reduced. The difference here is that the iodine produced is now going to re react with the thiosulfate. 
and it produces this tetrathionate and some iodide. So the exact same process can be replicated. However, we have to take into consideration the number of thiosulfates consumed per electron, because this, this differs a little bit. So, same as before, for every two electrons produced, you're still going to have one iodine. But the difference is for every one iodine, two thiosulfates. So the overall ratio is for every one electron, one thiosulfate. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio rather than a two-to-one ratio. So now that you have the background information, you know all this stuff, got it down, I'm going to show you the procedure and the setup that's involved in this experiment. So here we have all our materials that we're going to use and we're going to put in our solution. First off, we have our 0.1 molar potassium iodide and we have this and we already have the stir bar in here that we're going to use and we have 80 milliliters of this. The next we have our nice orange juice which is going to provide our ascorbic acid and then we have some phosphoric acid in this eyedropper and then some liquid starch in this. And we're going to pour it all together. Well, so orange juice, 10 milliliters of that. Then we're going to do seven drops of both phosphoric acid and seven drops of the liquid starch. Seven. There we go. Then liquid starch. So here's our setup. We have our solution. It's right here. You can see it's spinning. Then we have our carbon electrode here and our platinum electrode here. Then we have our photo sensor that you can see is touching to right up against the glass so no extra lights coming in. And then we have our flashlight over here. It's shining on it. And all this. Goes through a nice little soda hooked up through Microlab computer. So yeah, that's what it looks like. Here we are, so we're ready to start now. Flashlight's shining right on, we have it hooked up. As you can see, our light is pretty much steady at 99 point something. So it's pretty high up there, so we're good. I'm gonna click start, and we're gonna start this reaction. So you can see, it's a nice kind of orangish, like diluted orange juice, because that's basically what it is right now. So that's the color it is now. and. Our light's still looking good. So we're just gonna wait till we see it turn this blackish color, even though it's done. I am not sure if you can see it, but it's starting to get a little darker in there. So that corresponds to this point right now, basically. It corresponds with the drop of the light that you can see on your graph, on your piece of paper. And we know that now, since it's a lot darker, that all the ascorbic acid has been reacted and the iodide snail reacting with the starch to create this blue blackish color. I'll turn on the lights and you'll be able to see it a lot more clear. But the difference, pretty obvious, hard to miss. So yeah, experiment's complete there. All right, so this is what it looks like now with the, everything's reacted. So, pretty obvious, you can tell when it goes, that's what the starch is there for, so you can tell when all the ascorbic acids. So to dispose of our nice looking black stuff now, all we're going to do, take some vitamin C, crush it on up, and pour it in there. It's probably one of my favorite parts. <laughs> Put it around. You don't really need that much. I just used one, but you can share. And it's back to its original color, basically. So, and then it's just good to go down the drain. Be sure to fish out your stir bar. 